The pancreatic hormones are peptide hormones, meaning that they are made up of several amino acids and they are water soluble, but they are lipid insoluble. So that means that these peptide hormones are able to travel freely through the blood, but they are not able to cross that cell membrane because they are uh, lipid insoluble, but they are water soluble. Now, when we talk about pancreatic hormones, we have three types of hormones. We have glucagon, insulin, and somatostatin. Now, uh, each of these different types of hormones will have various different functions, but when we look at our pancreas, our pancreas is actually unique because it can not only act as an endocrine organ, but it can also act as an exocrine organ. Remember that endocrine means that we are releasing hormones into the blood, whereas exocrine means that we are releasing a substance through a duct. Now, when we think about the pancreas, the pancreas uh, actually releases enzymes into the duodenum, which can be used to uh, break down and, or digest our food. And that process of releasing enzymes through ducts into that duodenum is referred to as the exocrine uh, process of the pancreas. But when we talk about the endocrine process of the pancreas, that would be the release of glucagon, insulin, and stomatostatin, which are hormones that are going to be released into our bloodstream. So remember that the pancreas is unique because it can act as both an exocrine and endocrine organ. Now, the area of the pancreas that takes part in this hormone production and release is known as the islets of Langerhans. And these islets of Langerhans have, th have three different types of cells, alpha cells, beta cells, and delta cells. Now, if we take a look at alpha cells, we can see in this diagram that they're highlighted in red, whereas the beta cells are highlighted in green, and the blue refers to the nuclei of all the cells. So the alpha cells are responsible for producing glucagon. And now we need to understand that glucagon will be produced when our blood glucose levels are very low. So let's say, for example, that we haven't eaten uh, in a long period of time, we will have low blood sugar levels. Now our body does not want low blood sugar levels because we need glucose in order to gain energy to carry out uh, cellular processes. So when our blood glucose level drops, the alpha cells in our pancreas will re release glucagon. And when glucagon, glucagon enters the bloodstream, it will travel to the liver cells, the muscle cells, or the adipose tissue, and it'll inform these areas that the blood glucose level is very low and we need to release the glucose into the bloodstream. So for example, the liver will then convert glycogen into glucose. Now glycogen is simply a, a, a many, many, many glucose molecules that are combined together and stored within not only the liver, but also muscle cells as well. Whereas triglycerides are uh, formed within the adipose tissue. So when our alpha cells signal the adip adipose tissue that there's low glucose level, that will cause the triglycerides to be broken down into glycerol and fatty acids because now the glycerol and fatty acids can also be utilized to produce energy uh, within our body. Now, to quickly recap, alpha cells will produce glucagon in times of low blood glucose levels. The glucagon will then inform the liver, the muscle cells, and the adipose tissue to break down either glycogen or our triglycerides so our body can gain energy to carry out our cellular processes. Now our beta cells are the opposite of alpha cells because our beta cells produce insulin and insulin is produced in times of high blood sugar levels. So let's say for example that we eat a lot of ice cream. Now all that ice cream is going to have a lot of sugar and it's going to increase our blood sugar levels and we want to bring down our sugar levels because it can be quite harmful to have high blood sugar levels for a long period of time. So the beta cells in our pancreas will produce insulin and that insulin will travel through our bloodstream and reach either the liver cells, the muscle cells, and our adipose tissue. Our liver, liver and muscle cells will then be signaled to convert that excess glucose in our bloodstream into glycogen. Now remember that glycogen is how we store several, several glucose molecules. Now the adipose tissue is gonna convert that glucose into triglycerides. So once again, beta cells are the opposite of 
uh, alpha cells. Alpha cells will produce that glucagon and beta cells were, will produce that insulin. Now lastly, we have delta cells. Now delta cells are responsible for producing somatostatin and somatostatin is a hormone that is not only used in the endocrine system, but it is also used in the digestive system and our nervous system. And it's essentially a growth hormone inhibiting hormone. And the key word over here is that it's an inhibiting hormone. And within our endocrine system, it inhibits uh, both glucagon and insulin. Now you may wonder why do we need a inhibiting hormone for glucon and glucagon and insulin because insulin and glucagon are both opposites of one another and they could just inhibit each other but in reality we need a third party uh, uh third party hormone or a molecule that's going to fine tune and ensure that we have uh, proper amounts of uh, sugar uh, glucose in our bloodstream. So for example, let's say we have too much glucagon. Well, if we have too much glucagon uh, release, then we'll get too much sugar uh, glucose in our bloodstream, and that could actually be very harmful. So in order to ensure that we have proper amounts of uh, glucose being released into our bloodstream, we have the somatostatin. So if too much is getting released, the somatostatin will then inhibit that glucagon and fine tune the amount of glucose that is being released into our bloodstream. And the same goes for the insulin. We don't want too much insulin in our, in our, in our bloodstream causing, uh, causing too much uh, glucose to be converted into glycogen or, uh, or into triglycerides. So we have, that, we have that somatostatin, which acts as that third party fine tuner between glucagon and insulin to ensure that there are proper amounts of glucose levels in our bloodstream. And that's essentially our pancreatic hormones. Remember that we have the islets of Langerhans, which is the region where we'll find alpha cells, beta cells, and delta cells, which will work together to make sure that we have proper glucose levels. And lastly, we should remember that the pancreas is unique in that it can act as both an endocrine organ and an exocrine organ.